Hello, my name is Jay. Welcome to the No Play Productions Digital Instrument Suite presentation. Uh, during most of my life, I have played acoustic instruments, but during the pandemic, I've had some time on my hands to explore the world of digital instruments, DIY drum machines, and homebrew synthesizers. It's been really fun and rewarding, but it's mostly just been in my living room. And I wanted to take some time to make a video to showcase some of the instruments I've been working on in case anybody else is excited about this stuff and might be interested in making their own. My goal is to come up with a way of actually releasing the specifications, how to make these things, all creative comments, um, because I want um, other people to be excited about making instruments. And it's a lot of fun for me to think about not just making them, but sharing them. Um, either as music or as specifications for devices that people can make themselves. My mission statement with this project is I want to make things that are real instruments that aren't just novelties. I want to make things that can stand alone, that don't have to be connected to a computer in order to work. I want there to be a visual element with each instrument that you're getting visual feedback as well as audio. And I want it to be DIY and replicable. I want this to be shareable. I want people to make their own versions of these things if they're interested. That said, I'd like to now in introduce the instruments one by one. The Wobble Wand, the Electroloop Mach 1, the Electroloop Mach 3, the, Dr the Beatbox 1000, the Drum Tray, and the Cordulator. I think we're going to have a lot of fun looking at these, um, and thank you for joining me on this journey. And so I wanted to start with the Wobble Wand. This is a instrument that is centered around the Adafruit Circuit Playground microprocessor. It's got a bunch of sensors and buttons in there. For our purposes, it's important to know that it has 10 LEDs around the side and it has a device that will sense what axis tilt it's on. So if we rotate, we can see this slowly climbs up the C major pentatonic scale. And depending on which note it's on, that many different lights are illuminated. It can go either way, up and down the scale. Um, and depending on where it's tilted this way, it makes the leaps on longer time delays between the notes. On a flatter surface here, you can see it's rotating a lot more quickly. And I think this was put together for about $30 worth of parts. The circuit board itself, the Adafruit Circuit Playground, um, was about 20 bucks. And other than that, it's just a battery pack and a speaker. And you can see this on and off button. What I really like about the Wobble Wand is that because it's so simple, it was really easy to make too. And I like playing them together. And I will say these were originally developed to mimic um, a Nintendo Labo experiment, a musical instrument that I had developed with uh, Nintendo Labo. So originally this was a couple of Wiimotes, uh, but I much prefer being able to homebrew these things. And so this is the Wobble Wand righty and the Wobble Wand lefty. And I think you can imagine how those would be fun sitting around the apartment with. The next instrument I wanted to share with you is the Electro Lute Mach 1. Um, and so there's a lot going on here, but you can see that this is built into a piece of wood. This was taken from an old basketball floor. Um, and basically we have two sets of buttons, six buttons on each side. We have a speaker, we have a microprocessor in the middle and a battery pack, um, and we have one settings button. And so basically after developing the wobble wand, I started thinking, okay, so if I'm able to create notes based on the axis orientation of this one circuit board, what if I was creating notes and lights based instead on button presses, more like a traditional instrument. So let's turn this one on. 
And what we have here is the right hand is going to be playing notes in the pentatonic scale again, and the left hand is going to be determining what key we're in. So if I press the red button, that's putting us in C major. And basically these six notes correspond with the six notes of the C major pentatonic scale. And you can see that the LEDs are flashing red in time with the buttons they're playing. When you hold down multiple buttons at once, it's going to play in a um, rapid sequence. And then where it starts to become more of an instrument is being able to change the key. So on this side, red is C major, green is G major, yellow is F major, blue is A minor, And basically, I've just tried to put these together in a sense of cowboy chords, the most common chords that you'd be playing along with any given song. So you might have something like A minor, C major, G major, F major, back to A minor. Pretty basic stuff, um, but it's really fun. And it has a couple of settings options involved here. You're able to make the notes happen faster or slower and we're able to increase the brightness of the actual LEDs but generally I want to keep those pretty low because I don't want to blind myself Um, I also want to note, in, in addition to the chords over here, we also have octave buttons. This one on the left will drop it an octave. This one on the right will raise it an octave. Both at the same time will raise it two octaves. And so we're getting, out of these 12 buttons, we're getting a pretty huge range of notes um, that can sound like a pretty great accompaniment to anything you want to jam on top of. And so that is the Electro Loop Mach 1. I was very happy with this. I'm so proud of this instrument. Um, but one thing that I really hit a limitation with is that this is only playing one voice. It's a square wave. It is based on what this little Metro Mini circuit micro microprocessor is able to create. And that's just one type of voice, um, the square wave that we can hear. And I was interested in having something that sounded maybe a little, um, a little nicer, something that sounded a um, smoother, like a bell tone. And what I had to do there was dive from the Metro Mini to the Teensy suite of microprocessors. So let's take a look at the Electrolute Mach 3. And so the next instrument I wanted to show you is the Electrolute Mach 3. Um, you can see this is laid out pretty similar to the Electrolute Mach 1. Um, six buttons on the right, six buttons on the left, and these buttons do the exact same thing. This is a pentatonic scale. These are four separate chord buttons that can be combined up to 11 different chords, depending on which buttons you're pressing, plus down an octave, up an octave. But the real magic comes in here. This is using a Teensy audio chip, so it is able to produce significantly different voices. <laughs> Let's try another voice. You got a clearer tone there. I think I've got six voices programmed into this one. And again, we've got controls to control the tempo. And the brightness. Um, as well as the volume. Volume knob is important. The actual circuit board is all tucked away back here, the Electroloop Mach 3. You've got a power button and four different knobs to control different settings. 
Um, and the TNT 3.5 is buried in there with some breadboards. The other major innovation of the Electroloot Mach 3 is that I added a uh, root cord. And you should be able to hear this. With this thumb, it's going to play the root note down an octave of whatever key you're in. So you get kind of a very simple bass line. And I think you can see how the Electro Loot Mach 3 is a lot of fun to play and how it's a pretty straightforward innovation adaptation of the Electro Loot Mach 1. Um, I should say at this point the Electro Loot Mach 2 um, is pretty much halfway in between these and it lives in Minneapolis where I ordered the parts to um, assemble with my dad. And I bet I can find a video of him playing that in Minneapolis. The other thing I should say about these is that these LEDs are Adafruit NeoPixels. Um, and basically they are sewn into this board. There is um, literally conductive thread sewn from the positive terminals, the grounding terminals, and then I used some wire um, when I was having trouble getting that conductive thread to actually conduct. Um, but this is the Electrolute Mach 3. The next instrument I wanted to share with you is the Cordulator. This is pretty similar in theory to the Electrolute, except instead of arpeggiating through the notes, it is now going to be a polyphonic device. That's something that um, TNT microprocessors have no problem playing more than one note at a time. And now instead of a pentatonic scale, we've just got four notes, the first, third, fifth, and octave. And you might notice here that in as opposed to with the electro loot where you press a button and the note is either playing or not, these are actually pressure sensitive resistors. So you can see depending on how hard I press it, it's going to play a different volume. And once I'm holding them, I can adjust the pressure. Again, the left hand is changing those neopixels in line with whatever chord we're playing. And the right hand is just, those are just blue light bulb LEDs that show how much pressure is being applied. So those blues can't change color. But I think that just sounds really nice. And my future plans involve adding some, um, some reverb to that and to just get a really nice accompanying tone to play along with the lead electro loop. And so this is built on a Teensy LC um, microprocessor and a bunch of components I ordered from Adafruit. Um, you'll also notice that this has an actual um, preamped speaker involved. So this isn't really kicking out its own audio. It needs a speaker to support it, but um, that doesn't bother me. And that is the Cordulator. So next, let's look at the Beatbox 1000. Uh, we're not going to be able to see in here very well while it's playing, but there are just seven buttons inside. And those, again, are connected to an Adafruit circuit playground microprocessor and sensor output on the top here. And basically the way that this works is when you're holding down any of the buttons inside, I'm just going to hold down one button and it's gonna play that single kick over and over again. When I hold down a second button, 
it's gonna go between that kick and the snare. When I hold down a third button, four, and you can change what you're holding down. I've got a blank spot there. And my favorite part about the Beatbox 1000 is how it's constantly changing the key signature that it's in, the time signature that it's in. So here it is in 2-4, up that to 3-4, and now 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this one's just a lot of fun to jam around with. It's not so great as an accompanying instrument for real songs, because you don't have real songs that change their time signature that often. But this was a lot of fun to build, and I had this um, oversized die sitting around. You can see the speaker on the front here. Um, and so this was my first experiment with the percussion instrument, the Beatbox 1000. Um, but like I said, it's constantly changing time signature. It's a little finicky to keep on the beat. Um, so this was not where I wanted to end my drum machine experiments which brings us to the drum tray that I'm going to show you next. And so here we have the drum tray. And with this instrument, I really wanted to take a totally different approach than the Beatbox 1000. Um, this one, you can see it has a pretty clear grid, a lot more like what you might see a traditional drum machine to look like. Um, and you can see that we've got a few cells, a few different beats illuminated here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see that as it cycles across, we're getting um, the drum beat as represented by the lights. And adding other beats is as simple as clicking the battleship coordinates of where you want it to turn on. So if I want more kick, I want more snare and over here I've got tempo and one thing that I really wanted with this instrument was to have a swing and you can hear how adjusting this knob either puts it right on the grid or turns it into a sort of syncopated swung beat. I've also got a standalone volume knob just for the snare. The overall volume. This is a switch that turns on party mode. Um, and I also added a three, four time switch here. So turning that on eliminates these four from the grid that we're dealing with. Now we're just dealing with these 12 beats on a more traditional three quarter time. And here you can see we are in three quarter time. One, two, three, one, two, three, oops. One two three, 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 and a more in a three quarter time. Uh, depending on how well the sound gets edited, you can hear there is sort of a um, a piercing whine in the background. Um, if I learn more about capacitors and resistors, I'm sure I'll be able to fix that. And there you can hear a three quarter time beat with a swing. And this again is running on a Teensy 3.5 chip um, along with an SD card to hold the samples of the actual drum notes. Um, but I've had a lot of fun with this. This is something where I can actually get to be playing along with my instruments. Um, and with that said, let's have a little electro lute and cordulator and drum grid tray jam session.
And so those are the instruments. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed that jam session. It was really fun to put together. I have a lot of future plans. I have ideas about combining the electro loop with the cordulator. I want the drum tray to be able to save different patterns. Um, and I've got ideas for how all this all might come together, but it's, um, it's gonna be a long process. More than anything, I'm looking for um, people to help me sort of look at what I've done and think, well, that was a moronic way to do that. Uh, you could do that way better. Um, to sort of refine the code and to get things more into a place where I would feel better about releasing them Creative Commons, not just something where people would say, this is a huge mess, but something I can do something with this. I'm really excited uh, about being on this journey. I also wanted to say thank you so much um, to Amir and Nivius for making the Electroloop Mach 3 possible. Um, to Andy and Mark at Wonderville, your enthusiasm and guidance at the co-working spaces has been invaluable. Uh, John Gurgley for pointing me in the direction of code in the first place. Um, and just everybody who's had an encouraging uh, like on social media when they say, see my bleeps and bloops. Um, so thank you so much.